I'm doing something wrong. Say what? Where? Here. Am I still okay? I think so. I want to say that's 13.6 from right here. Did you make it down that far just to make sure I'm doing it right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then all said and done when you're, let's see, multiply by 2, 32, 8, 40, 53 over 6? No. 55 over 6. Really? Six. Make sure I'm good up to here. I got four thirds. Four thirds, thirds. Um, thirds. Minus thirteen sixths. Minus thirteen sixths. Okay. Multiply by two. That's thirty-two. Multiply by two. That's eight. Thirty-two and eight is forty. Wow. Twenty-seven sixths. Is what I'm getting. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know how many we got. Twenty-seven sixths. Let's have like a quadruple. Uh, Quintuple check, or whatever. Um, 27.6, 27.6, 27, 27.6. I hope not. Hopefully you reduce that as well. Nine halves, perhaps? Yeah. That's what I count. Nine halves. <laughs> Just making sure. Well, before we reduce, yeah, 27.6. Okay, yeah. Three is a common factor. Let's go back down to our, trying to get that. Nine halves. Do you see the nine halves? Yes. Do you feel okay with our example? Yes. By the way, this is the worst possible way you could do this problem. <laughs> the worst. Why? This is very hard. This is very hard to split that up. In general, hard to do. Easy for this one, hard to do in general. It's have two different integrals. Now, what I want you to do is face the board. Turn your head like this. Seriously. Are you doing it? Yeah. Turn your head like this. Is there one function that's on top of the other function when you're doing this? That means you can do it easier with respect to y than you could with respect to x. I'm dizzy now. Seriously, I am. Let's think about this for a second. I, I might go a couple minutes over today, but you need to see it because we're going to finish this up. Um, so my apologies. It will not take very long. Here's an idea for you. Sometimes you can switch the rules of x and y. Let's suppose you had two functions. Now, of course, these functions are going to be in terms of y, not in terms of x. So we'll start with something like x equals h of y x equals g of y, like that. It will be going not according to the x, don't care about the x, care about the y. It will be going from c to d. And the area we're talking about is that area. Notice that if you put your head like this, right takes the place of top, Left takes the place of bottom, but we still go from C to D. It's basically like taking this picture and doing this with it. Like reflecting it across white, almost like reflecting across white. Because almost. Is that G of Y? Yes. Our area in this case would be, where would it start on the Y axis? Where does it start for here? C. C. Where does it end? D. Which one's going to come first? Oh, um, Which one's on the top or on x right? Equals, uh, h of y. So it would be h of y minus g of y d what? Uh, d y. In terms of y now. In terms of y. So basically, 
h of x is to the right. h of x is to the right. Mm -hmm. And this, of course, is if h of y is greater than or equal to g of y for all of c to d. Guys, this says the same thing I said for, for this type of thing. It just says in terms of y instead of terms of x. Uh, let's go ahead and let's do this setup on, on our problem over here. I will show you it will be basically very easy. Same one. Yeah, I want you to see that this works out the same. Now, if we're in terms of y, I need you to notice something. That this, we had this. Uh, we had x equals y squared, and we had y equals x minus 2. You with me? If we're going to do this in terms of y, our functions need to be in terms of y. Now, this one's great. We love this one. This one's not great. Explain to me why. It's not. How do I solve it for terms of y? Those would be the two functions I'm comparing. If you set them equal to each other, I'm going quickly through this because this is exactly what we've done before. You're going to get the same exact points that we did before. y equals 2 and negative 1. Are you still okay with that? Mm -hmm. Honestly, raise your hand if you feel alright with that. Cool. So, now that we have these functions in y, we have y squared here. We have y plus 2 here. Is there one function that's completely, not on top of, but to the right of? If you turn your head like this, it will be on top of. If we have one function that's on the top or on the right of another function. Okay. Now, from, from this way, where does it start? Where does it start? Where does my integral start? It goes from bottom to top. Where does my integral start? Where's my integral end? So my area is from negative 1 to 2. Notice that's from C to D. Negative 1 to 2. That's why I had my y's. It's in terms of y. Negative 1 to 2. Uh, the function on the right was y plus 2. The function on the left was y squared dy. Yes, no. Mm -hmm. Feel okay with it so far? We just use the y-axis as we would the x. You're exactly doing that. So you just turn and make some easy. <laughs> kind of, but you can't go from left to right. You're no. going from bottom to top, so that is that is wrong. You can't go from two to negative one. You have to go from negative one to two. So you can't just turn your paper. That doesn't work for your bounds. It works for your functions. It doesn't work for your bounds. So be careful with that. Did, did you see the point? What I'm trying to make there. Why is this nicer? Hey, how many integrals? Two. One integral. One. One integral. If you do the integral, parentheses really don't mean much here. You're going to get y squared over 2 plus 2y minus y cubed over 3, and you evaluate it from negative 1 to 2. If we do that, work it out, but you're going to get exactly, exactly the same answer. You plug in your 2, uh, whatever you get there, you plug in your 2, you plug in negative 1, you subtract them. You were going to get nine months. Yeah. Easier? Yeah, it is. It is easier. Because we have one function over one function in terms of y, but we didn't have that in terms of x. So sometimes it, it would behoove you to really look at your function before you get started. You follow me on this? How many people understood that example feel okay with it? So can you switch your variables and deal with this in terms of y then in, certain, in terms of x? Absolutely. Just be careful. Be careful with your bounds especially. If we're solving for uh, functions in y, have your y variables. If you're doing it in terms of x, have your x variables. Plug them in accordingly and you should have no problem.